Hi, teachers. How are you? It's Tuesday. I'm sure you know the day. Good thing about teaching kind of keeps you um, aware of that. <laughs> For the rest of the world, we're like, what day is it? We don't know what day of the week it is. Teachers are so amazing. <laughs> so um, great to see you colleagues. And uh, this week I'm talking about writing and I went back to revisit feelings for kids. And I've really been thinking so much about Mark Brackett's work, Permission to Feel. And I think he's so onto things. Um, it's, it's really incredible to think about that and to think about how we can use our writing and our reading to help us understand our feelings. And so today was, was a lot about that understanding piece. So what I really talked about today that I thought was really interesting as I was even talking about it, I, I felt like things were happening for me that I was really kind of surprised about. Um, I shared with kids uh, some, some definitions or basically sharing with them like, here's two feelings that are similar. Let's try to look at them and let's try to identify them. And first, if you think about it in the, in the grid, the feeling grid, like he puts anger, rightfully so, up here in high energy, low feelings, where disappointment is high energy uh, or low energy, low feelings, right? And so a lot of times, like, I think what I was thinking about today as I was sharing this with kids is once we know the difference between both of these, I think sometimes kids, maybe even some adults, maybe even me, hopefully not, but going to help me and become a better person. I feel like this book is really in that, in that way. Um, but to understand like, what is anger? Where does it come from? What is disappointment? Where does it come from? And then when we have these feelings to be able to identify the difference between those two. So sharing like anger is all about an injustice happening, something feel like you've been wronged. So if you've been bullied or teased for no reason, right? Whereas a disappointment is more about having our expectations sort of shattered. Um, you know, we, we thought we were going to the beach when we were in Florida this week, this month. So I've been in Florida, this is going on five weeks that I've been here. Um, thought I was gonna see the beach before I left. I don't think that that's gonna happen now. So I'm a little disappointed, rightfully so. Um, but I'm not angry because I haven't been, that's, this is not, I haven't been wronged, right? And if I get angry about that, that's something I could look at to say, wait, 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 wait. You know, I think oftentimes we, you know, uh, uh, our individuals, but even, you know, for ourselves, but even towards others, you know, you're not allowed to feel angry and you're not allowed to feel angry when you should be feeling disappointment. But if we don't really understand the difference between those two, then, you know, how do we regulate that? And so if we can step back and say, well, wait a minute, are you really disappointed or are you really angry? I think that you, it can help um, kids diffuse those feelings a little bit so they don't get to those high level um, feelings that that can really impact us you know in in the way we treat others but also in the way we treat ourselves you know like when we are stressed in these like high energy down feelings we know that that affects our health right but are we you know are we stressed out because are we letting ourselves get stressed out because we might not see the beach instead of feeling disappointed and kind of living inside of that and moving on right um, you know, or anxious because we're not going to see, you know, so helping kids understand and then saying, oh, 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 wait a minute, like, hmm, that was not an injustice. That was really merely a disappointment. I understand it. You are disappointed. I get that. And you have a right to be disappointed. So you live inside of your disappointment for a little while, maybe write about it. And that might help you to feel disappointed instead of moving up and up and up that will then affect your body, you know, and affect others around you. So I feel like I, I just really am so enjoying Mark's book and really feel like this is important research to think about. And I think it's so important during this time, like as we are having kids write 
narratives, you know, small moments. This is a great place to get ideas for our moments and to figure them out and help us get through this. I know many people are talking about like, this is a moment in history and it is, it is, it is a moment in history and it would be great to record those, these moments in history and what life is like. Um, and I think though, on top of that, we need to help kids pay attention to how they're feeling in these moments because we need everyone to survive. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting coming from New York. I've been watching Andrew Cuomo's um, press conferences, you know, and one of the things I'm so impressed with him is that he is recognizing that this is a physical, serious virus, but it's also mentally draining. So physically we're scared and, but mentally, we are scared, we're locked up, we can't be with the people we love and we want to be with. It's a lot to, to take on. And so if we can help kids sort of like pay closer attention to their feelings, um, I think like in this moment of time as they're dealing with this, it will help them so much. And then I think, you know, for life, this will be an, an amazing gift for them. And I certainly think this is going to lift the level and the quality of their writing and their reading as well. So I'm going to continue with this work this week, um, continue to defining it, but then also thinking a little bit about um, that regulation piece and the patterns that they're noticing. Anyway, colleagues, I hope you're well. I, uh, I think about you all the time. I miss you so much. I wish I could see your faces and uh, I hope you can feel my arms wrapped around you, even though I don't know when I'll be able to do that again, but I will. <laughs> um, take care. See you tomorrow.